So here we are, welcome to video number 6 on the most accurate clock in the world. Today's video we'll be looking at the spin test. I forgot to do a spin test on the new plumb bob, which soon will be the pendulum. Okay, basically normal setup, laser. Just uh, focus now on our bob. The two four outriggers, sorry, on the outside are uh, basically there to increase the diameter of the bob without, uh, I guess, increasing its mass. So we've got probably a probably a ninety. Oh, I've had another. Oh, I don't know, sixty mil. Maybe it's a 60, 50, 75 mil diameter now. Spinning bob. So they also add a little bit more accuracy with the, the wobble test. So I have to bring this up to speed. So I have to go up the stair, climb up here, and turn the motor on. Now I'll pump it gradually, and we'll just get the motor spinning and the bob. Because it's a direct drive off the optical cable, there's no give in this system, so I've got to be gentle. I'll just keep pulsing it till I get a get the bob to spin. Okay, we're at maximum speed now. Okay, time is two minutes in, I guess that's just starting now. We've got our laser on the bob and it's dead centre. I'll just give it a little bit more. There is a bit of modulation, fluctuation in the optical cable as it's trying to catch up speed. The bob is going slower than the motor at this stage because there's a lot of elasticity in the bob, in the optical cable, sorry. So they will catch up the speed and they'll sink. But you can obviously see this is far more accurate than any of the bobs I've had before. Let's shuffle that clock across a bit more so we can get an idea of the time. We're starting to take the slight amount of wobble in the bob. Been running now about two minutes. Okay, let's shuffle that clock over a bit more. Still holding pretty true. I guess the modulation of the error would be maybe two millimeters very hard to start this bob without inducing some sort of oscillation because there's such a huge delay between the motor and the bob down the bottom But that starting to sway now a bit. See if I can focus a bit more on that. Okay. 
Okay, it's illuminated now, not illuminated. I'm just looking at the uh, optical cable hanging from the roof. As it hits that red laser, it... I'm guessing probably one and a half to two millimetres swing at this stage. Okay, I don't want this movie to get t too long, so what I'll do is I'll stop the video now and I'll come back in another five minutes. So here we are at the ten minute mark, taking off that two minutes. The bob is actually caught up now to the motor. And we still have our initial modulation, which is... Oh, God. This is a tough one. I... Alright, I think this is so tough, I've never been able to work this out. Maybe, um, I know my friend, I can science that, should be able to help me out here. He's a bit of a whiz with this sort of stuff. If you're listening, I probably need your help. The um, concept is we have a mass with a rotational inertia and it's suspended by, I guess, you could consider it almost a gossamer thread. Um, it has inertia and has an axial plane uh, associated with the initial inertia that it was set up with. So, in theory, the top of the um, cable would it be extending through the small motor, two metres above it, through the axle of the motor into outer space, probably infinite distance. So we now have um, extremely long plumb bob spinning with inertia. Now if the earth was to rotate would we expect to see the, the bob wobble? I know he was a whiz with this bob, I can science that was a whiz with this bob wobbling. Here's another harder one for you if you're watching or anyone else who's a bit of whiz. I've never been able to actually crack this one. My, in, my initial concept would be that on a rotating object this would want to stay in its fixed plane so if the earth was to move it would create some sort of distortion uh, remembering that the earth is only moving five to 15 degrees an hour I don't know, look what, what I might do is stop again this video will get too long and I'll come back in another probably 10 minutes so here we are back, the experiment's been running for 30 minutes. I would say that the oscillations have increased in frequency but not in amplitude. That's my initial looking. Maybe if we run it for another hour we may see something different. But initially I would say on this results that the spin test may not be an accurate method now to check balance in the bulbs because uh, we, we, we've moved on to another level of accuracy here way beyond what Foucault could have achieved and possibly anyone else because of this optical fibre has allowed us to uh, set up a, an experiment. You would not be able to get this accuracy with hard drawn cables or any sort of wound cable I think you would start seeing some sort of modulation from the cable, any metal cable possibly some nylon cables may get there but it would have to be a monofilament cable uh, so I think to get any more accuracy you would have to put this in a vacuum I've been walking around the room there could be air currents Look. It's too hard to call. 
certainly those the following experiments what I'll do so the next video you'll see which will pick up imbalances in the bob with these outriggers uh, it's really easy to pick so at this stage I think uh, I think I've achieved enough with the showing the demonstration of the spinning. It's extremely accurate, Bob. You must admit. Okay, well that's enough. I thanks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.